Bismillah, alhamdulillah. A lot of people trying to promote prejudice and hatred and Islamophobia today have been bringing up this issue of jizya. They call it a non-Muslim tax, which is factually incorrect. Let me explain. Every government, it needs funds to provide services to its citizens. For example, in the United States or in Europe, you get taxed. You look at your income, you get taxed 30%, 60%, depending where you live. You get taxed on sales. You go buy something from the store, 7%, 8%, 9%, you get taxed right away. And those taxes are taken to run the government. Now, in the Islamic form of governance, there are no taxes. That's not the way it works. So how will a government ruling by Islamic law provide those services as security, military, policing, um, welfare to its citizens? For the Muslims living there, they have to pay into that system through what's called zakat. Zakat is a pillar from the five pillars of Islam. Every Muslim has a religious obligation to pay that towards the poor, the needy, the welfare that's going to be used by the state to help the needy, the less fortunate amongst the citizens. Muslims and non-Muslims benefit from zakat. From the categories that can receive zakat are those that are not Muslim. So now this, this is going to go on as a method to run the government, but also a ritual that is a worship, that is a part of the religious ceremonies of Islam. Now what about non-Muslims living in that government run by Islamic law that are going to be enjoying those benefits. Should they be obligated to pay zakat? Well, Islam tells you that you have the right to practice your own religion. And that means an Islamic obligation such as zakat is not going to be forced upon non-Muslims living under the Islamic government. What about defending the Muslim land? This is the responsibility of every Muslim. They have to defend the Muslim land. For example, in Israel, you have the IDF. They have a draft. Every Jewish Israeli has to sign up. But if you're a Palestinian, Arab, Christian, or Muslim, you are not asked to sign up. You're not allowed to serve. You have to support the Zionist state in other ways. So those people in the IDF, they have to serve as a religious obligation. In a Muslim state, you have the same thing. You have Muslims that have to join the army and defend the lands. But a non-Muslim is not going to be forced to do that because this is a religious obligation. And Islam does not force its religious values on others. So if you're going to be allowed to live by your own religion and still use the services being provided by the government, you have to pay into it. It's a very simple thing. If you use the services, you're going to be paid. So it is a service fee. It's not a non-Muslim tax because if it's a non-Muslim tax, then even if you don't use the services, you should have to pay. But that's not the way jizya works. Only when the government that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security, you know, uh, as far as uh, welfare, as far as what today we have roads and hospitals and all these things, then you need to pay into that whether you're a Muslim or not. As a Muslim, you'll pay zakat, you'll give sadaqah, you will have those methods of giving which are religious obligations. As a non-Muslim, you will not be forced to follow Islamic religious practices, but you will pay jizya which can be less than zakat sometimes. So this is not a non-Muslim tax, it is a service fee. I'll give you one example that should make it clear. In the United States, we have taxes that you have to pay. But if you're a member of a church, like the Catholic Church or the Mormon Church, then you could have a tax-exempt ID. That the government says that these churches are fulfilling an obligation by helping the poor, by providing services that give them a tax-exempt ID. So you as a Catholic, when you give money as a religious worship to your Catholic church, you, you get to not pay taxes on them. You write them off on your taxes. Now an atheist, he, can't, he doesn't want to give money to a Catholic church or a, or a Muslim mosque or anything like this. So the government tells him, sorry, you got to pay taxes because these are services that a government is providing you. So because of that, you have to pay taxes. You don't say, oh, this is an atheist tax. No, you say that's a write-off because those churches, according to the U.S. government, are fulfilling a welfare service of the government. So when you, when you donate to your church, fulfilling as a Mormon 10% of your, of your gross income, fulfilling that religious obligation, you don't have to pay taxes on them. Same way in Islam, when you are fulfilling your obligation by giving zakat and sadaqah and serving in the army and, and, and obeying the, the ruler and doing what needs to be done to provide security and services, then you will not pay above paying zakat already. But as a non-Muslim, you do not have to do those, but then you have to pay a service fee for the service that you are utilizing. And this is why in the authentic narration, Khalid ibn al-Walid, when he was in, in the area that is Syria today, when he could not protect the non-Muslim from the Byzantine, he returned the jizya back to him. If it was a non-Muslim tax, why would he give it back? 
No, he said, this is for a service. And if we cannot provide that service, we will not collect jizya from you and we'll even give you back whatever we had collected because it's a service fee. And anybody with a logical mind without prejudice will know that this is a very fair and just system without any prejudice against anybody. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can send a question to us in the link below to contact us.